I am a habitual encroacher. I like to encroach. I like to <laughs> encroach, encroach, encroach. Like a cockroach. Like when you cut the lights on and the cockroach comes running at you and it doesn't make any sense, but what do you, what do, you do in the cockroach? You go like this. Uh, Even though you're much bigger, like why? Bubble, it's always worked uh, for me. Bubble. <laughs> yeah. It's always worked for me until I sparred with this guy. And not only was he keeping me away from him, he was keeping me away from him with kicks. Like round kicks, which that's the first time that's ever happened to me. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure that out so that so that he can't do that to me anymore. <laughs> this is Gabriel Varga, six-time world champ. He's a pretty good kickboxer. Uh, I use a, a very straightforward method, similar, similar to you. I, I don't use a ton of this. I play around in sparring like that, yeah. but I knew that you weren't gonna abide by any of my nonsense. So my plan was, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get in here where the, the reach disparity matters for nothing, yeah. make it a little dirty, yada, yada, yada. And I was getting round kicked. Normally, when I get round kicked, like, uh, like don't do it the right way, do it the yeah, way, the wrong way, right? Yeah. Normally, I take the kick, boom. Yeah. I take the kick over here, boom. I, I go ahead and sink into it, block it, accept it. But I couldn't figure out, because I can't see in the, I don't know exactly why, because I'm using this. Yeah. And I was crashing into just a brick wall it felt like over and over and over again pretty much that's what you're trying for using your force your force is making it worse for you yeah but i couldn't see what he was doing but he since explained it to me he waited a couple months to explain it to me <laughs> what he was doing we did a great uh he did a great seminar the other day that i was at where he talked about this and i was like oh there it okay is. great can you teach me that now so he's going to teach me that now Okay, so normally when people throw a round kick, the leg comes up and it lands straight, which as you were saying before, you can enter right down the middle. So if I throw my kick here, there's a clear entry point. If I can bend my knee and instead of come sideways with my kick where I hit you and you move off on a 90 degree angle, I'm gonna bend my knee and I'm gonna push you back on a 45. Now, if you can do that, you can take this guy completely out of range, but it also works when he's being offensive. If you walk into me, I stop you yeah just put my shin across there's a couple fine points on this especially what does your lead hip do because if i kind of rotate like this i'm not going to be able to accomplish it so it's more me thrusting my hip forward to make sure that the shin really sticks out at the same time because the hips going forward as a counterbalance my head has to lean back because if i just push my hip forward right i'm going to fall very quick so i yeah. have to push my yeah. head forward. So even if I am swinging your head. Exactly, so it works as a counterbalance and it keeps my head extra safe, so I don't have to worry. There's a little bit of like a long knee mechanic. Yeah, very similar to a long knee. Yeah. It's kind of like a long knee that's turned over. Yeah. Almost, like, oh, that's sort of the, the idea there. So if you have somebody who, like when I go with Mike, I'm like, yeah, obviously he wants to be on the inside with me. He, he doesn't want to be here. This is a terrible position for him because right. I can lengthy box him the whole time. So every time he moves, I just jam him. Now, you can do this completely stationary. This is something that you'll see the TIE fighter is very good at. I just stand here, I wait, and I just pop off my lead foot. That's it. But if for some reason I'm too slow, and you manage to get close, then I skip and I move backwards. So that I don't, even, even if I'm a second off, a split second off, I can just go back and then again jam you. Let's look at that. That's really interesting. I hate, I hate, I hate the switch kick anyway, but uh, the way you do it by moving backwards, that's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, so instead of staying stationary where both feet basically land in the same spot they started at, this foot is gonna move a little bit forward and this one moves way back. Now from there I create that extra range so I can throw that big kick. I can also move forward on the switch or stay neutral or move back. And that's when you take a very basic motion and now you make it into something more advanced just let's, by looking at other elements. Let's, let's break this down, do the backwards uh, let's mark this, one. even with this, through the backwards and freeze. Yeah. Right, so this is still moving forward, but, but, not, but not as far forward as if you were doing it staying still. Yes, and then the back foot moves really far back. That's um, interesting. I think why I don't like the switch kick is I see it abused so much as a way of like, I can't throw my left kick, honestly, so they switch just to add power yeah. and get a left kick going. Pretty much. So I think it gets abused that way, but this is a more like tactical decision switch. Yeah. So across. yeah, now, now if, I, if you have somebody who's just like, oh, they're gonna come forward, especially if they throw a cross. If you have somebody who's really heavy on leading with a cross, their whole left side is exposed. I don't care how tough your body is, like I have a tough body, but if you throw that as I lunge at you, 
you're gonna end up just getting so hurt because you're in this stretched out position, it's so hard to tighten. I think with the, with the, particularly with the left side one that we're talking about mostly, yep. which you can do this for the right side too. You could, it's just a little bit more, a little bit more risk associated because your body weight moves in. And on this one, I can move back. And the, and the problems with the right one is that if you throw your right one at somebody, uh, it generally has a little bit more pop on it for most people mm. than their lead one. Yeah. I think where people get off track with the lead leg kick is they feel like it's not powerful. Like I don't feel good about it. Yeah. But if you're using it, like I'm adding to it. There's such a thing as powerful enough. Yes. You well, know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so, this should be a powerful kick in general. True. It should be. But if it's not, you're going to add everything I need. Yeah. Right? Especially I, with it the feels, yeah. It feels like. Yeah, you just walk in. Yeah. Especially with shin on forearm. Right? Yeah, that's not if I'm not hitting you in the cushy spot. Is your shin okay? I don't want to hurt you with my <laughs> but I tell people all the time, I'm like the worst thing you can do when you're gonna block a kick, if a round kick comes, is block with your forearms. Your forearms are gonna get broken. Now they might not break in this motion, but they're gonna get messed up. So the amount that you're pulling it across, is it a lot? Is it are we pulling it? Like the, a knee so shield or like a crowbar across or the problem with the more I come across. Mm -hmm. is the closer I get to the punch. So if I start really going completely sideways this, with this, mm -hmm. I get really close and it's not really necessary. So I like to maintain the normal distance. Like if I throw my normal round kick, I'm landing with the lower shin. That's with the leg kind of straight, the way, straight. That, yes. the way you might already be throwing it. Yeah, you can see like when I finish, it's really straight. But then if I want to bend it, I'm basically going like that. It's kind of like a 45. If straight is normal and completely at a 90 degree, is where we don't want to be. I come about halfway between the two. And this puts, this would be my poor little torso. Yeah. If I stay still, I'm getting whacked with the kick like normal. Right. And if I come forward, I'm running into humerus. Humerus? I'm femur. Sorry. Femur. That's your humerus. I'm running into femur instead of like smushing. Like I can't, I'm not going to get any give. I'm running into your, yeah. your biggest, no. the biggest, strongest bone in, in your body. Upper shin. Upper shin is a good spot to come in and land as opposed to trying to kind of come like this. Yeah, this that. That's going to collapse. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then provided I give a big enough pivot and I turn my shoulders, like I'm strong. I'm really strong here. You're not going to walk me down. Occasionally I'll have somebody who's like, Oh, I will. One day I will. One day. One day I will. Pounds. So how do we, how do we practice that and get better at it? Like, so if I, if I wanted you to drill, Mm -hmm. Again, you can stand here over and over and throw the kick, throw the kick, throw the kick. You're only going to get so good at it. So I'm going to start really working outside of range. You'll have your hands up. You're mm -hmm. ready to twitch that left leg off. I'm going to start back here. Okay. Right? I'm moving around. I'll move in. I'm going to have to guard up properly. If I walk in like this, it's going to really hurt. Like this is an awful way to get hit. Yeah. So I'm going to turn that one arm the way I would normally cross block. So I just throw it here. I so you don't, little, I don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. I make so, you a little nervous. I make you kind of focus on something else. Yeah. So I distract you, just give you long range punches. Then I'll just walk. That was like, too far across, right? Yeah. That was a little far. Okay. Yeah. You, you'll feel the thud. Right. You'll feel like when you hit somebody, it's like, then run it off. Yeah. There's nothing else that you no, can do. It's not squishy. Not squishy at all. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just out here. I'm giving them a little pulse forward. And then when I move, I just, boom. and you see how I just bounce off. Them. Now you want to make sure that you move back too. <laughs> yeah. So you move. Oh, back. I bounced off. So yeah. I'm going to be. So it's like a front kick. If I throw my front kick and I move back, that's no good. I'm going to move and you're going to stop me. Keep the yeah. right hand tight. So your weight doesn't shift with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can, if you, if you need to, you can push your hip further forward to really generate some weight. I didn't warm up. Didn't, yeah, we're not warm, but. And like any drill, you want to start with lots of time, lots of space so you can think about it. So I don't necessarily need to start from right here where you're panicked. Like, shoot, I have to go. <sighs> I can start from back here and just walk towards you. So you have more time to work on your technique. And that's it. And we just take our time here. As you get more comfortable, I close the gap. And if you ever feel jammed, if you're like, shoot, this guy's getting in punch range, then you do your skip back, and then you stop me there. You can come off the back leg as well. If the guy's really powerful with his jab, like he just keeps jabbing you, jabbing you, and you start throwing the right round kick with that shin across. Oh, okay, times, I got you. Yeah, yeah. so I'll just, boom, and it's just changing the angle. Boom, right? So instead of instead coming to the of side. Whack. Yeah, where a lot of times it's they can catch. This is a hard darn kick. That one's easy to catch. Trying to catch the one that comes across, it's rough. And then even if they get a hold of it, it's much easier got, for you to exit. There's things we can, yeah. you can turn, you can rip your foot up. Yeah. You're set up for so success. So much easier. So try that out on the bag. 
put a little bend to it. It's 2023. You don't have to be so straight all the time. You know, you can play around. Play around. Things up. Let your kicks exist on a spectrum.